Hello, welcome to Groot's Technical Analysis. Uh, today we're going to cover a new technical indicator called Bollinger Bands. Now, Bollinger Bands is a very popular indicator used by a lot of uh, new traders, and you can start using this right away because uh, it's very simple to use. It's one thing. You don't need another bunch of fancy bells and whistles on your chart. You can just have this by itself and uh, be able to take some potential trades. So what is a Bollinger Band? Okay, so before I get into this, please like and subscribe to this channel if you like the video. Uh, I really appreciate it. It helps me with the YouTube algorithms uh, in order to start growing. So with that, a Bollinger Band is basically bands that measure the standard deviation and volatility from a price. Okay, so when you have low volatility, the bands will be very tight and narrow, similar to what's happening right here. When volatility comes in and you have a price movement, you will see the price move to the extremes of one of the bands and then they start getting really wide. So we had like a false breakout here and then a big move down. Now, there are different ways that you can set your settings for the Bollinger Bands and it all really boils down to the um, standard deviation that you want to use. Okay, so if we come into the settings for your Bollinger Bands and you go to the standard deviation, you set it to a standard deviation of one, okay? 65% of the price will be contained within the Bollinger Bands on a standard deviation of one. I don't think this is very helpful. I think that um, it's a little too much, right? So two is kind of like the happy medium. 95% of the price action will be contained within the bands when you have a standard deviation of two set. Now, if we change that to three, 99% of the price action will be contained within the bands if you have a standard deviation set to three. All right. It is very rare for the price to come outside of the bands when the deviation is set to three. You can see in this example here, we don't have anything. There's one spot right there and that's and there's one spot right there. So you can see it's very rare. OK, now I prefer using a standard deviation of 2.5, but that's just me. OK, so whatever you prefer is up to you uh, when you try the indicator out yourself and start playing with it and backtesting the strategy. Now, there are some different strategies that you can use for this. It all depends on what the bands are doing, okay? So if the bands are very uh, small and, and tight like this, and they're parallel with each other, then we're just trading in a range right now. And so the idea would be sell when it's at the top of the range, so some like right here, and then you would buy when it is at the bottom of the range, right here, and then sell again when it's at the top of the range, like right here. Now, as soon as we get a breakout of some sort, these bands will start to expand. And you can see how this happens. When the price starts moving up, you can see this band starts pointing up and this band starts pointing down, okay? This would be a signal potentially of a breakout forming, right? When this is pointing up and this is pointing down, that's the sign of a breakout, right? Now, depending on how inclined those lines are determines the size of the breakout, okay? Now this ended up being a fake breakout. So as soon as you see the candle fall below the standard moving average, and in this, I use the 21 because it's a Fibonacci number, uh, and you can change that here. Uh, by default, it comes as 20, and it's just a simple moving average. Um, and, and as soon as you see it fall below that, you want to you know get out or potentially short the market. But this wasn't a very good example for a breakout. Uh, it just fell, and now it's been sideways. But as you can see, Bitcoin's bands on the daily time frame are now getting tight again. What does that mean? That means the volatility is low. When the bands are wide, the volatility is high. Now, we probably won't get another moment of volatility again until these bands are tight again. And so that's what's happening now. And so we could expect a big move to come soon. Now, just because we're above the simple moving average now doesn't mean that the move will be up. And just because we're below the simple moving average doesn't mean the move will be down. OK, we want to wait and try our try to take our shots at the top and the bottom of these bands, right? And so maybe we want to take a short there and see if we can take it to the bottom and sell again. Maybe we're creating another range. So that's just one idea. Right now, this is just mostly sideways movement. This isn't really much of anything other than slightly downward trend if we're just looking at this picture here. If we're looking at the whole picture, well, then this is a big downtrend, right? So you don't want to try to buy the bottom of the Bollinger Bands too much in a downtrend. Why? Because it could just keep going down. It's actually a better idea to sell or short the top of the bands when we're in a downtrend. And so you can see how well that would have worked if we go here to this example. 
So we would want to short the market here. We would want to short the market here. And we would potentially want to short the market all up in this range up here, right? And you can see that works way better because we're in a downtrend. You don't want to try to buy the bottom of these things because there's not much movement back up. Whereas if we sell the tops, we get these big moves down. Now it's the opposite. If we're in an uptrend, and I'll just move over here to the bull market to show you an example of that. If we start getting into an uptrend, well, we want to buy when we touch the bottom of the bands and then sell when we get up top again. So there's a buy. And then the next time we touch is right there. So there's a buy, right? And you know, this would have been a false buy right here. This would have been where it didn't work out so well because this ended up being the top. Now this is a daily time frame, so you're not going to get nearly as many signals as you would on maybe a lower time frame. So I'm going to erase the drawings. We'll move into a lower time frame and we'll see what we can find. So I'm going to go over to an uptrend just to show you what this looks like. I zoom in. And again, you can adjust your standard deviation to be a little lower if you want to have maybe some more signals, but you'll also get some more false signals too, where the price gets way outside the bands and you're kind of like, eh, I don't know what to do, right? Uh, but here's an example of an uptrend where you can buy all of these touches. So there's one right there. Right here. So you see that touch right there? You can buy that one and sell the top of the band. Here's one here. You buy these sell the top of the band okay and then when it gets really far up here into these bands this is where you want to take your profits and wait for a pullback and then try to get back in again right and so here's another area where it gets close if we had a standard deviation of two i bet you that one touched so it all kind of depends on the asset but there you go so there's standard deviation of two and that there you can see would have been a buy so you got to play with play around with it a little bit depending on how much volatility is in the market will determine what you want to set that deviation to if we have just sideways motion for a long period of time, then you're going to want your standard deviation to be lower. If we have a big bull market, then maybe you want your standard deviation to be a little bit higher. Right. And so these are the areas where you can buy. You can buy there. You can buy here. You can buy here. And then vice versa on the other side of the market. We want to sell the downtrend. It's probably going to take me a long time to get over here in a four hour time frame. OK. So same thing here. Here's a downtrend, right? You don't want to try to long the downtrend. It's a bad idea. I don't care what indicator or tool you're using. Stop trying to long downtrends. Uh, wait for confirmation of reversal and then a confirmed uptrend and then we'll start buying the pullbacks. Okay, but here's an example where you would want to sell all the tops. So you sell here and then you take your profits at the bottom. You sell right there, take your profits at the bottom sell here and if you held on long enough you would have got a good good lick out of that one and then here's an example of where we have sideways motion okay so we have a sideways channel for a long period of time you can go ahead and even draw your support and resistance in this time frame where you have resistance and support and every time we get to the extremes of this bollinger band you want to sell here and buy here sell here buy here even these wicks down below like this these are good places to try to catch uh, some really good trades all right but ultimately this fell down and you can see what happens when we get a breakout all right so here's your breakout and as soon as you see that bollinger band shoot straight up like that and this one shooting straight down like this that's a breakout and you can see how wide those bollinger bands get when that happens and then when it consolidates it gets really really narrow in here and then we get another move and narrow and this is mostly chopped sideways, right? So this is kind of hard here. We're getting really narrow and it's basically just a big downtrend. So as soon as this falls, you want to short the downtrends here, short, 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 you know, until we get down to where we are now. And you can see these bands are getting really tight again, but ultimately this is just sideways motion. So if it's sideways motion, you want to buy the bottoms and you want to sell the tops. Right now we're getting close to a bottom again but the bands are getting really, really tight, especially on the four hour right now. So we can expect a moment of volatility to come soon with all of this tight sideways action. I don't anticipate that this is going to just stay this way for that long. Uh, and so I think we will get a move. So we'll watch for it. We'll watch and see what these Bollinger bands do 
and what side of the moving average we're on when it does it. Okay, crypto likes to go hunting for liquidity a lot. So most of the time we're gonna get a move down and then up or up and then down. So don't bite on the, on the first move, wait for a little bit of confirmation uh, before you just jump into the game. You can use the simple moving average as your stop loss. So for example, if you see us starting to make a move down, well, we would enter short and our stop loss would have to be near that, that simple moving average or just above it in order to keep ourselves uh, a little more risk averse and not just holding and hoping uh, for it to go back our way, right? So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope maybe you can use the Bollinger Bands in your trading strategy and in your trading journey. Uh, if you like this and want to see more videos, please like, subscribe, hit that bell button so that way you get notified when I make another video. Uh, if you would like to jump into the Discord right now, it's 30 day free trial, so it's no risk. If you don't like it, you can leave. Uh, however, I'm in there very often. It's my full time job. This is what I do. Um, so I'm very attentive to everybody in the chat. I answer questions all the time. Uh, so I would love to see you in there and have a great day.